Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad to have you here on this virtual worship experience with Faith UMC. I'm Johnny Simpson, the senior pastor here, and I thank you for joining us to participate with us in worship online. If this is your first time watching the stream and need your help, if you could text CONNECT, text the word CONNECT to 281 336 one six nine eight. Again, that phone number is 281-336-1698. We would love to get in contact with you after this worship experience uh, to grow and uh, learn together. Now, if it's your first time watching the stream or it's your 100th time watching the stream, we need your help as well. If you could please, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, click the like button, uh, click the share button and leave a comment. The more people that click like and click share and leave comments, the more other people on either Facebook or YouTube get to see this worship experience. You are one second away from being able to worship online with your family and friends, no matter where they are in the rest of the country. Uh, country. We are so glad to have you. We have a wonderful worship experience in store for you. We are going to affirm our faith and sing the glory of Patri, and then we are going to be led in worship and music. God bless you, and thank you for joining us. Now we will affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and ascended at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the
stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to Good morning, faith, family, and friends. It is now time for us to go boldly to the throne of grace and have a talk with our Savior. Would you please bow your heads and pray with me? 
to the God of our salvation. We just want to say thank you for allowing us to see another rising of the sun. Father, we want to thank you for keeping us and loving us and looking beyond our faults and seeing our needs. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your mercies that are renewed every morning, that we have another chance to get up and do all that we can for the kingdom of God. Father, there are people that are in need of your tender care, trying to overcome an illness. Father, we know that you are, are a physician. We know that you are able to sustain us and meet us where we need you. Father, you will encourage us to keep up this good fight of faith so that when it's all said and done, you will get the glory and the honor for what you have done for us. Father, we want to thank you for your provision. We want to thank you for the food on the table, the shelter from the storm, the clothes on our backs. We want to thank you for our families, Lord, and our children. And Father, as they prepare to go back to school, please keep them safe and have them in an atmosphere where they can grow and learn and become the people that you have called them to be. Thank you for our teachers that nurture our children each and every day. Let them be quick to encourage them and lift them and lead them in the direction that they should go. Father, there are those that are dealing with loss of home, loss of jobs, loss of a loved one, because there's just so much going on in this world. Father, we're asking you to meet them at the point of their needs, knowing that weeping may endure for the night, but joy shall come in the morning. If they just hold on to your unchanging hand that will guide them, comfort them, and lead them in the way that they should go. But Father, we want to pray for our church right now, all the churches under the name of Jesus Christ that we will come together as a body of Christ in unity and love, lifting one another, showing one another, and encouraging one another to stay faithful to your word and to your will. Father, we ask a blessing upon all the ministries that are going on, that we may reach one and let them know about the love of Jesus Christ. Because that is what we're here to do, is work for the building of your people and your kingdom through our songs, through our prayers, through our study, and Lord, through our worship. Let it be a, a sweet aroma to you. But Father, when we hear thus says the Lord, let us be slow to speak, but quick to listen so that we can carry the gospel out to all those that are in need of a savior, for all those that are in need of a healer, and for all of those who need a word of encouragement. We want to thank you we want to honor you with everything that we have this day. So let you get all the glory that you so rightfully deserve through the movement of the Holy Spirit, through your people, to be the instruments that go out into the world to show the light of Christ, the love of Christ, the deliverance of Christ who we love and adore. And we ask all of this under the unmatchless name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord and Savior. 
And the church of God said, Amen. Good morning, people of faith. You are watching Faith TV and I'm your host, Delana Gilmore. Thank you for joining us this Sunday for this worship experience online. Remember, if you missed the service live, that's okay. You can go to Faith UMC's Facebook page. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or check the church website later on for all the archived messages. And now for some faith news and notes. Do we have your correct contact information? Email Dickinson Faith umc at gmail.com so we can keep in touch. Submit your prayer request to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash prayer. All requests are confidential unless you would like them placed on the prayer list. Sunday school is on Sundays at 10 a.m. in the Winfield Warren Room. And finally, thank you to everyone who participated in the summer feeding programs this year. Because of your gifts, we were able to make sure plenty of children did not go hungry while school was out. We look forward to working on this program again and making it more of a success. Well, church family, as always, there's a lot going on at Faith. Be sure to check the website and follow us on social media. That's all for now. Enjoy the rest of your worship experience. Pour out 
what can defeat me is you hold my hand. I know fire can burn me. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me. Is you hold my hand. I'm walking in your victory. Your power is within me. No giant can defeat me. Is you. Amen. And now it's time for the offering. I want to take this opportunity to, first of all, thank you for continuing to give during this time. This is how the work of the kingdom still gets done. There are multiple ways to give. You can still send a check in the mail to 2205 Avenue G, Dickinson, Texas, 77539. You can still come by and drop off your offering on certain days when we are here. We also have online giving. If you go to www.dickinsonfaith.org slash donate, Donate. You can see the ways that we will be able to receive your seed online. We also have PayPal. Dickinson Faith UMC at gmail.com is the PayPal email address. We also are able to take giving through the app Givelify. If you search for Faith UMC Dickinson in the app of Givelify, you will be able to find us and you'll see a picture of the church right on there and you'll be able to give. We thank you for continuing to sow a seed into God's kingdom. Amen. We ask a blessing upon the gifts and the givers. We ask a blessing over those who are able to give and those who are not able to give. And we ask that this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word. Our message today is coming from the sixth chapter of Ephesians, uh, the 10th through the 20th verse. Again, that is Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 through 20. I'm going to be reading the New International Version of God's word. Let's see what it has to say for us today. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. God, we honor you. We bless your holy name. We thank you for the opportunity to come once again into your presence and hear from you. Lord God, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight so that we can point people to know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins. Take everything out of me that is not like you. Hide me behind your cross so that people don't see me, but they see Jesus. Let this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So for the time that we get to spend together, I would like to talk a little bit about personal protective equipment, personal protective equipment. I became familiar with the phrase personal protective equipment or PPE for short uh, while working at Exxon. The culture there focused on safety. You couldn't just do the job. You had to do it and do it safely. So when I would be in an audio visual room changing out a, pro a broken projector bulb in a, or a projector lamp, I had to wear personal protective equipment. I had to wear protective gloves, goggles, a long sleeve shirt, steel toe boots. I had to wear all of that just to change a projector bulb. The goggles, though, they all had a purpose and the goggles kept uh, my eyes safe so that if there was a piece of loose glass that uh, flew out of the projector when I opened uh, the lamp uh, container, uh, that, that that glass would not get into my eyes. And I had gloves on so that I wouldn't cut my hand when I reached into the housing on a sharp edge or broken lamp. Uh, I had long sleeve shirts on at the job for the same reason and steel toe boots that just in case something fell down, uh, I would not hurt my toes. All of the, per the personal protective equipment kept me from danger. Wearing the right equipment for the right job protected me. I had to keep all my PPE on for a job. I couldn't just do it without my glasses or without my steel toe boots or without my long sleeve shirt. I had to have it all on to do the job or else I'd only have part of the protection. We are all uh, used to having some type of equipment on for protection, especially during this time. Uh, people wearing gloves and uh, masks and uh, face shields and uh, double masks and uh, making sure that we have hand sanitizer and we are constantly using it after we touch stuff and, and after we have touched another person. People are trying to do their part to keep themselves and others 
safe. But you got to make sure you have the correct type of protection and you got to make sure that you have complete protection. If I were to sell you a car and told you that only half the airbags worked or only half the seat belts worked, would you still buy the car? I know some of you may be asking, well, pastor, which half of the airbags don't work or which seat belts don't work? I may want to take somebody joyriding uh, with me. Um, do you think there are players in the NFL that would like to play football with just shoulder pads and no helmet or no cleats or no pants with pads in them? Uh, personal protective equipment is useful as long as you have the right equipment and you are using it properly and that you have the complete equipment there. The Apostle Paul was talking about personal protective equipment in Ephesians chapter six, uh, verses 10 through 20. Uh, Paul is speaking uh, of this personal protective equipment when he is getting to the end of the book of Ephesians. Paul is coming to a close. Well, at least his first one. Uh, <laughs> and Paul tells the, the people in the Ephesian church to have the right tools and the right equipment for the right purpose. Paul is speaking to the Ephesian church about having the armor of God and having protection and protective equipment on because Christianity was illegal during this time of the writing of the book of Ephesians. Matter of fact, uh, Christianity would not be legal until uh, almost 200 uh, plus years later in 311 A.D., Paul was writing this letter to the Ephesians, not only uh, because it was not safe, but because he was in prison at the same time. Uh, and because Paul was in prison, Paul was familiar with the Roman soldiers' weapons. And not only was he familiar with the Roman soldiers' weapons, he uh, was familiar with the Roman soldiers' jails. And not only was he familiar with the Roman soldiers' jails, along with the Roman soldiers' weapons, he was familiar with the Roman soldiers' beatings. Paul was intimately aware of the Roman military hierarchies and the Roman military punishments and his familiarity with Roman soldiers and Roman beatings uh, was why he could describe the appearance of a Roman soldier so well. Paul is coming to the end of this letter and he is reminding his readers that they are surrounded by danger. He's reminding the readers of the power that is arrayed against him, and he uses imagery, imagery of a Roman soldier in a battle against their foe. For Paul, these enemies were, were formidable. There were rulers, authorities, and spiritual wickedness, and spiritual forces in high places. And this is an urgent reminder uh, that this is one of the last thing Paul underscores because he's talking about what is fresh in his mind. He sees the soldiers and his letter uh, starts off about talking about being blessed in heavenly places, but also being blessed in heavenly places means that you're also going to have to war in the heavenlies. So there is a struggle, he says, against the evil in this heavenly place. Uh, the ancient Romans had a militaristic culture. Uh, if you were in that time period, you needed to be expected to fight. Uh, but Paul tells the Christians that their battle is not with those people, but their battle is on a spiritual level, a, a battle with sin, evil and death. And these spiritual uh, uh, these spiritual enemies, these spiritual powers uh, were affecting society. Uh, I said before that Christianity was not popular during this time. Matter of fact, it would have been in the minority. Matter of fact, uh, there are some documentations that said that the people during that time referred to Christians as atheists 
because they didn't worship those gods. There would have been temples all around made out to other gods during this time. They would have been surrounded in a city uh, where everybody was worshiping everything but their God. Not only that, there would have even been some temples uh, erected to political leaders. So they're surrounded by that and it's illegal to be a Christian. But Paul tells them that they need to have the right PPE on uh, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, uh, feet fitted with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit. Ah, yes. Uh, he tells them about, uh, the, the, the breastplate of righteousness is, it's a large part of armor, uh, that covers a large portion of the body, but they were to have righteous character. And just like that breastplate could cover, uh, them and cover a large part of a soldier's body, your righteous character will protect you. Your righteous character will get you into places where money and influence cannot. Uh, you, you, some, thing, some people say that all we have in this world is our reputation. And so we need to guard it with as much as we can. And if you live a righteous life, if you do the things that God has told you to do and you say the things that God has told you to say, you can do the things that God has for you. So you want to don that righteousness. You want to pick up that righteous character and feet ready to share the gospel. There it is again, time and time again. Every time I think I'm going to preach something, uh, it's very clear that there's going to be something about community. There's going to be something in this Bible about sharing it with other people. There's going to be something about this, about getting what you have and taking it out into the world so that they can know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. The sandals that they put on uh, to share the gospel, get the word out of G about Jesus Christ to others. See, the Roman soldier would have had to have sturdy sandals that protected them and helped them move around better than it would if they were barefoot. Have that righteousness that cover you. Be ready to share the gospel and then have a shield of faith. Ah, uh, this shield of faith is something that is interesting uh, to me because the, the, the Greek word that was used, the Greek term that was used for shield is not some small circular shield that a Roman soldier could carry on their arm, kind of like uh, Captain America. No, 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 no. This was a huge shield, long and tall, so that it could deflect the arrows no matter where they aimed at you. <laughs> the Roman shield was large enough to cover your entire body from head to toe, and it was made out of wood and had an iron ba uh, barrier around it, and then they would cover it with animal hide. And then before they went into battle, they would dip the shield into water before they took it out to battle. Why would they dip the shield in water before they took it out to battle? That's because the enemy liked to shoot arrows before they got close enough for combat and they would light those arrows on fire. So if you had a wet shield that was big enough to cover your whole body, when those fiery arrows came and hit that wet shield, they got doused. They were put out. And so this shield of faith, it's our faith that needs to cover us from head to toe. It's our faith that says that that will keep us when people try to say things about us. It's our faith that lets us know that I am the righteousness of God. It is our faith that lets us know that God is a doctor in the sick room and a lawyer in the courtroom. It's our faith that lets us know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy shall come in the morning. Have faith enough to cover your whole body and put something on you so that when people try to shoot those flaming arrows at you, they get doused out. The shield of faith. And then he says to put on the helmet of salvation and, and, and salvation is something that is both a present experience 
and a future hope. We are saved, but we are constantly trying to walk out our salvation. So the kingdom of God is mentioned as something that is already and not yet. It's already because Jesus has completed the work by uh, giving himself up and raising himself from the dead with the power of God on the third day. So he's already won, but it's not yet because he's coming back again. And so we have to continue to keep that in our hearts and minds and continue to walk out our salvation. We don't just get wet and that's over. We have to keep studying the word. We have to keep praying. We have to keep tithing. We have to keep fasting. We have to keep listening to the words. We have to keep spending, uh, listening to the word of God. We have to keep doing the things with other Christians to grow in our faith. And then he says to put on a belt of truth. Uh, a Roman soldier's belt was tied around them tight, around their um, their tunic in order to keep something close. And it was the, the belt was tied around their tunic so that they could always have that sword. So the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So if you want to, to, to make sure you are properly armed, you have to have some truth around you. You have to have some word around you. And, and, and the word of God, uh, the, the sword of the spirit is something else that, that is, that is interesting because the term that he used for sword was not a big old broad sword. It was a short sword that was made for up close and personal contact, up close and personal combat. Uh, uh, so to use the word, you're going to have to get close to some other people. You're going to have to get close enough to some other people where you can reach out and touch them. And so he thought he said that if you have these things on you, you will be prepared to fight the battles uh, that are that are against us as believers. Uh, we need PPE today. We need PPE to cover our eyes and face and our hands and our body and keep us from uh, getting hit with fiery arrows and protect our sleep, our, our respiratory system, protect our ears. Uh, if, if, if we could take uh, uh, the, the, the message of health professionals, it would be very self to, to protect yourself and others. Make sure to have on the proper protective equipment so that you can protect yourself and others others. And then along with that PPE, you need to pray. We need to pray and keep praying. Prayer is just as crucial as the armor of God that Paul mentions. Prayer is a continual part of Christian living. That's why he said, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the Lord's people. Prayer is not a one-time conversation and that is all that needs to happen. The Bible says, says to seek the Lord while he is near and, and well, seek him while he may be found and, and call upon him while he's near. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open to you. The Bible says, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes those things, he says they will be done and he'll have what he says. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So you got to cover yourself up and you got to cover yourself in prayer. Pray and keep on praying. And then talk as if you have already have the victory. Act as if you have already had the victory. Paul is claiming victory even though he is writing from jail. Paul knows that we already have the victory because the man by the name of Jesus went through 40 and two generations, lived a life that we couldn't live, died a death that we couldn't die and became the perfect sacrifice for us. So he knows what the end is, even though he's still in the middle of this situation. 
he may be in jail right now, but he knows that there is victory in the end. You may be hurt right now, but there is a victory in the end. You may be distraught right now, but there is peace that's in the end. You may be sick right now, but there is healing in the end. I can't remember the name of the songwriter, but he said it so uh, succinctly. He said, your life is not falling apart. It's falling into place. And that is what's going on right now. When you be able to come to put your whole body into the God's personal protective equipment, you'll be able to fight those battles that you weren't able to do before. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open and we invite you to come. Pray with me, church. Oh, Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for an opportunity to gather once again in your name and study and hear from your word, Lord God. We ask a blessing over those who heard the sermon and those who will hear it later, that your Holy Spirit will do a work that only the Holy Spirit can do and prick the hearts of those who desire to know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins and ask, what must I do to become saved? Lord God, do a work in those that are connected to the church. We lift up every spoken and unspoken prayer concern that may be touching your people right now. Heal them, give them provision, give them peace, give them whatever it is they need, and we'll be quick to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory that is due your name. It is in Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. The doors of the church are open and they've been open for over 2000 years. This is an opportunity to connect and respond to the preached word. The doors of the church are open for those who don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. This is an opportunity to get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the pardoning of your sins. So if you don't know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins, this is an opportunity to connect. If you do know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of your sins and are looking for a new church home, I can recommend one for you here at Faith UMC in Dickinson, Texas. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and want to get to know him, but don't necessarily think faith will be a good fit, I am okay with that. Once we get you on the right path of salvation and knowing Jesus Christ and the pardoning of your sins, I will write a letter to whatever Bible-based church you decide to join, keyword being Bible-based. There are a bunch of ways for you to connect if that has touched you in some way. You can text CONNECT to 281-336-1698. Again, that is 281-336-1698. Nine, eight. You can call us at 281-337-6036. Again, you can call us at 281-337-6036. You can email us at dickinsonfaithumc at gmail.com and you can inbox our Facebook page. We would love to connect with you and develop a relationship and get you uh, closer to us as a church family. Now, may we live out the word that we have heard, receive all that we have prayed for and be blessed so that we can bless others. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Father God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. In Christ's name we pray, amen.